Mm-hmm. Scientists have to go into the world, they have to be sensitive to patterns that need an explanation. Most patterns don't need science because why they happen is totally obvious. Um, so you have to be able to spot things for which the explanation is not obvious and you have to be able to fill in the gap of what is not clear with something that could in principle be correct. Whether it is correct or it's not, it could answer the question. And that process of how you generate hypotheses is actually one of the hardest things to teach students um, because it is a fundamentally creative process. It's not a science, it's an art. And it's, it's an art that A, if each of us who does it described our method, it doesn't sound very scientific, right? You know, how, how do you bring yourself to imagine a possible explanation for a phenomenon that nobody knows the explanation to? You know, it is a kind of a fantasy realm and it doesn't sound rigorous. And, you know, it isn't rigorous. It's guesswork and intuition and all sorts of things that scientists pretend are not an important part of the process. But nonetheless, if you're going to be good at science, you have to be good at this process and you have to give yourself license for that creative endeavor. And so uh, Heather and I both discovered time and time again that it was very straightforward to teach students most of the process involved in science, but getting students to phrase a question, you know, to see something, to phrase a question about it, and then to propose a hypothesis that could in principle account for what it is that they've observed. It's a very difficult method to teach and really, you can't really teach it. What you have to do is alert students to the fact that they need to find their own process for it and that they have um, license to, I mean, how many wrong hypotheses do you imagine up before you hit on one that actually has the potential to be right? It tends to be quite a number. And so you, you need to give students license to think a bunch of wrong things and to feel good about it in order for them to get to something that might be right. Um, but not easily taught. And frankly, I don't even remember it being described anywhere in my education how you come up with a hypothesis. I don't remember anybody <laughs> ever explaining that to me at all. Huh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those black box, one of those black boxes. Yeah, it is. I guess that's, that's the catch-all, maybe that's why I use the word art, because that's just the catch-all term for anything that you're like, well, it's not a science, because I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, I, what does it mean for it to be an art is an interesting question. I think there are lots of skills. I think here's the problem with, it, with saying that it's an art, and it shouldn't be a problem, but it is. That there is a corner of art at which we've come to a level of abstraction that whether something is good art or bad art is completely an aesthetic question. It's entirely subjective. That's not true if we're talking about a painter who is depicting something in front of them, right? How well does the painter depict it is actually a question. It's not totally objective, but they could depict it so poorly that nobody can tell what's in the picture, or they could depict it so well that you couldn't possibly mistake what's in the picture, or they could do something really amazing like Escher, who depicts something that can't be, and that your brain is hung up trying to figure out where the picture is inconsistent. But in some sense, when we say something is an art, we are not talking about a realm in which everything is subjective. What an art is, is something in which the method is not fully explicit. And so there's lots of parts of science in which we can say what the method is. The part of science in which we can't say what the method is, is a little bit like throwing a frisbee. If I say throwing a frisbee is an art, there's physics to making a frisbee do what you want it to do. Most of us who throw a frisbee well couldn't describe the physics. And in fact, it's a little bit surprising when you try because it's inconsistent. You know, the physics of throwing a ball is much easier to understand than the physics of the way a frisbee arcs, you know, through its trajectory. But even, but if you try to describe throwing a, a frisbee while you're throwing a frisbee, you're going to fuck up that frisbee throw. 
Yeah, and yeah, you will because the part of your mind that f throws the frisbee isn't the part of your mind that explicitly knows physics. It's some other part of your mind that knows something that it would be fair to call an art. You know, if you watch people play ultimate frisbee, you know, a really good player who knows how to arc the disc, you know, maybe even out of bounds so that it comes back in right at the place where the player that they see running is going to end up. It is artistic, right? Which is not to say haphazard or subjective or anything no, it's, like it's that. it's finding a solution that uh, has an air of unexpectedness about it. It's a skill that isn't explicit. Yeah. An art is a skill that isn't explicit. Mm -hmm. And so the uncomfortable thing for us analytical types, I think, is acknowledging how much of things that we claim are explicit mm -hmm. really aren't. You know, your surgeon can say an awful lot about what they do. But your surgeon also has a feel for stuff that they don't even know how to, they don't explain it to themselves. They, they intuit it when they get there. And, you know, a surgeon with a good intuition versus one with not so hot intuition, mm -hmm. you want the one with the good intuition, even if what they know explicitly, explicitly is exactly the same. So uh, I think those things that exist in a realm where things are explicit, that fraction of an explicit realm that is in fact not explicit and therefore an art is very important and hypothesis generation is very much of this sort it is something it is absolutely a skill and people differ tremendously in their capacity to do it well but even those of us who do it well can't explain how we do it mm -hmm. right we could give you a little insight but mostly it's some you know how do you muse right yeah how do you muse about a question about nature it's it's very personal and highly idiosyncratic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.